Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and as you know from watching my channel, I am no great fan of destructive techniques when it comes to locks, but lock drilling and milling, here's an example of some drilling here, are techniques in the public domain, as is lock snapping, that we have to be aware of if we want to have the option of choosing to do something about preventing such attacks, or at least making it much, much, much more difficult for criminals. In a recent video, we explored the phenomenon of cutting bicycle D-locks with the ever more commonly found die grinders and the ways in which manufacturers are trying to protect us against such a technique. So what can we do about countering drilling attacks on door locks? Well, there are a few things that can be done that we will explore later, but first I want to show you this very special lock that was kindly lent me for this video by today's sponsor, Vent. And here it is, this little HKR lock. At a glance, it looks like any other Euro cylinder but here is a very cheap Euro cylinder to compare it to. You might be able to see that there are a couple of differences here and here. That's right, there are some hardened steel plates both sides of this HKR lock, and they look like this, and fit at these positions protecting the keyway and the Bible. Sadly, it is no longer in production. It seems like the high production costs and high sale price just didn't allow this HKR lock to succeed, and sadly, they are no longer made. But is it effective? Take a look at it being attacked the exact same way as that first lock that had no anti-drill protection at all. And there's hardly a scratch. I was lucky enough to be allowed to attack the lock myself, admittedly with some consumer grade tools, but they barely left a mark at all. The grinding disc was getting somewhere, but you can imagine how long it would take and how noisy it would be to grind a door lock open like that. Even using hardened metal files barely scratches it. It's truly a fascinating lock, in my opinion. A shame there isn't anything else quite like it out there today. And even after all the abuse, the lock still works. So how else might we protect ourselves? Well, though as we sadly know, little can really hold back a determined criminal. At the very least, we can make their lives more difficult and try and make drilling type attacks less effective by choosing locks with anti-drill features. They will often be advertised by the manufacturers um, on their websites and the packaging you see here, of course, an anti-drill picture here. And yes, some of these are more or less effective as others, but at the very least, finding a lock that has an anti-drill feature is some way towards improving anti-drill security. Whilst that isn't guaranteed effective, anything to slow down a noisy attack has got to be a bonus. Some lock brands like this Ultian, not a sponsor, go one step further with much greater anti-drill measures where there are multiple hardened steel inserts in the lock core and a cam locking mechanism that are designed to keep the lock from opening after a physical attack. It's also possible to retrofit anti-drill escutcheons to your door lock. Ultimately though, locks can't be relied on as a single point of security and household security should be as multi-layered as possible. There are lots of online resources that can help you make good security choices and you can always seek advice from local security professionals who might be able to advise you regarding your personal needs. And now a few words from the sponsor of today's video, Vent. Vent have been selling, manufacturing and developing lock picking tools for hobbyists and locksmith professionals since 1983. On the weekend of the 25th and 26th of March 2023 this year, Vent will be hosting a lock picking championship near Cologne in Germany. Co-hosted by the German and Czech lock picking communities, an event with lock sport at its heart. Picking competitions will include freestyle and hand picking categories, as well as side competitions such as electro picking and a fun category. As well as the competitions, there'll be exhibits from brands that you know and love, including Southord, Spooks, OFC, and many others. Food and drink will be provided by a food truck, and there'll even be a party on Saturday night too, so you can get to know all the other participants. Entry will be free, but there'll be limited places. Head on over to the link in the description below to register for the event, check out the schedule, and read the terms and conditions. 
Anyhow, talking of lock picking, let us now pick this HKR lock and actually see what it's like inside and how it holds up to a lock pick attack. So we're in the vise and here is the key and we can tell by looking at it that it is a five pin lock. Feels like it's a hardened steel. Well, it looks like it's a hardened steel key as well, which would be kind of cool. You see that cut one is very, very low cut. Then you've got pins two and three, which are very high cuts. Pin four, which is a medium high cut, protecting a high cut pin five. It does have this sort of cut on the back here. I don't know why that's there, which means I've got to be very careful when I'm gutting this lock to figure out what could be going on inside there. Um, the key works remarkably smoothly in the lock, despite it clearly have been attacked for demonstrations before, even on this side of the lock, which is pretty cool. And what's even cooler is the keyway. This is a very standard, uh, low security, universal or Yale style keyway you can see there. So it's paracentric, it's not too bad, but it's quite wide. Now check out the HKR keyway. I mean, it's clearly a lot higher security, a lot thinner, a lot more gnarly and bent and warded that profile, a lot harder to get your picks in. What picks am I going to use? Some picks in, uh, I think, 20 thousandths and 18 thousandths, which should be enough to just, you know, get past the um, low set pins and see what we can do. So, a bit of bent wiper blade in the keyway. I'm going to start off with uh, this sort of number one short hook in 18 thousandths an inch and just work my way back through the lock from pin five, four there. You can see I'm in a bit of a false set already. Three, two, one at the front there, I think. That was one, yep. Yeah. So just working my way through again. Two, counts rotation, and that's really good, but um, I don't think I picked it properly. So there you go, it's pin one, pin two now. Pin three feels good. Pin four feels nice. And pin five. I can't tell whether I'm oversetting pin five or not. So I might just have to come back down the keyway to make sure that I'm not missing any uh, pins being picked. So pin one there again, just needed to be picked. Let's go back through. Feels like pin five is here. And there we go. I think we picked pin five. Go back through the keyway again, just to try and find anything which doesn't feel picked. So pin one feels picked. Two, a little bit. Of, do you see the counter rotation on two there? Um, but that seems to have gone. Pin three now. Uh, Back through, okay, so did I pick three or was it not quite there? Let's go back through one, two. Might release that tension a bit. Try and get that full set back. There we go, got it. So feels like this is actually a very well made lock inside. So that's why we're picking pins like that. And we're not always getting that full set back. So it might mean that we need to pick these pins a few times, which is actually good for a, a lock picking challenge, I think. I'm quite impressed by this lock so far. Four, but we're, uh, we dropped something. There we go. Back through. And three. So nothing on one, two, three. Let's go back to pin five at the back. There we go, onto pin five. Now this is feeling like it's picked, but it's not actually opening. So just gonna check down this part of the keyway, see if there's anything weird holding us back, doesn't appear to be. So go, going to go in with a slightly different lower profile hook and see whether that gives us better feedback on some of the pins at the back like that, that's pin five. Going back through the front of these pins here. I'm trying to find anything that's giving us that telltale counter rotation. 
like on this pin here. Okay, which we did pick, but something's dropped, so we need to treat it with some care and let that tension come back down and go back through again and see whether we can re-pick it. That's pin two there, pin one, good. Okay, so it feels like we're back to where we were supposed to be. Back through, back through, back through. Good, that's pin four, there, back to pin one. So if anybody has picked a lot like this before, you'll know what I'm experiencing here, which is what we call spool ping pong. As you pick a spool, unfortunately, it tends to drop a spool you've already picked and you've just got to go keep going through the lock until, there we go, you get that open. It's really about patience as much as it is anything else. So um, we are completely unlocked. That did take a while. I was actually really impressed by this lock, actually really impressed. It felt great feedback. It drops spools all the time. And um, I think that's a really good feature of this lock. Gutting such a rare lock like this comes with far too many risks for my liking. But luckily for us, we already have a pre-disassembled one of these HKR locks sent to us as well. And you can see the pins that would have been inside the lock I just picked. We have a standard driver pin and all the rest are steel, possibly hardened steel, spool pins, which explains that wonderful uh, cancer rotation we were experiencing. Uh, these are very sharp, very, tight I love the shape of these ball pins they gave such lovely false sets all of the key pins are also steel and none of them are a, a high security key pins at all they're all standard key pins but you do also have a little ball bearing why turns out that this lock does actually have a version of a key control to control uh suites of locks and what blanks are able to be used all those kind of things. So if you look here at the back of the key, there is a small notch. If you put the key in the right, right way around and put the ball bearing in where it's supposed to be, which is there, you'll see that this will uh, turn freely in the keyway as it's intended. However, if you were to pop this ball bearing in the wrong position, where there isn't a cut on the back of the key, it sticks up. And whilst I think I should be able to put that in, yep, yeah, it blocks the whole key from turning. So even if it's the right key, it's got the wrong uh, cut on the back. So it's got this wrong key control cut, then this core won't turn in the lock. So there you go. Uh, and that was what that cut in the key was for. So there you go, that's the amazing HKR lock. Um, I think it's an absolutely fascinating piece of lock history. I wish I had one of these myself, so cool. Thank you to Vent for sponsoring this video and for lending me this lock. I hope you genuinely found it interesting. Please stay safe, stay secure. If I have a comment for me, leave one below or read them all, reply to as many as I can. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel and want to see more content like this, then please subscribe, it really helps me out. And I'll see you all next time.